Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna get into how loops works in Java, so let's go! Don't forget this channel have a dedicated Discord server. It's a place where you can talk about the episodes and tutorials of this channel. Maybe you wonder something about the last episode that was a bit unclear. Or maybe you just wanna say hello. And for those who wish to go the extra mile to support the channel, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page, and also there's a membership option here on YouTube. Thank you. If I asked you to print out the string, the value is followed by a number, and that number needs to ascend every time there is a printout. And I need you to do this 10 times. How would you do it? Would you do it like the example in front of you here? It looks, I mean, it's going to work, right? So if I run this, take a look at our console, the value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Yeah, that works. But what if I told you to do that up to a thousand? Now, are you going to copy paste one of these lines a thousand times? What if I tell you to do it 10,000 times? That would take a lot of time and a lot of code. And it can be done way easier. That's where loops comes in. In Java, we have three different types of loops. We have a for loop, a while loop, and a do while loop. And we're gonna start with the while loop. It's the easiest to understand, so that's where we start. And the objective is to do this, to have this type of printout 10 times, and it needs to ascend. So one, two, three, four, five. So how do we do that with a loop? Well, first let's get rid of this. Then we add the keyword while, indicating now we're trying to do a while loop. Two parentheses, just like we did in our switch. A is less than 11. We wanna do this as long as A is less than 11. Then we add the brackets for the code. And we had susu, let's uh, copy one of these lines. The value is then plus a and plus plus so we increase it so now we're going to print this line out as long as a is less than 11 let's see if it works and it looks like it works so the value is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 wonderful what about doing it a thousand times or up to a thousand well, that went fast. So three lines of code can do a thousand printouts or 10,000 or 100,000. But before we continue, when we are working with especially, especially while loop, if we forget to increase A in one way or another, let's just say I forgot to do uh, plus signs here and now I run it. What's going to happen? We are stuck in something called an infinite loop. We have a start of the loop, which is, well, the while here, or this bracket, but there's no way of us to stop it or get out of it. So it's still running. Let me terminate it. That is something that can happen in a while loop. You simply forget to increase the variable that you are checking against. And of course, you can increase it here, or you can say A++ after, that works too. We run it, we get the same printout. And whatever between these two brackets is going to be the code we execute as long as this statement is correct. So if it's supposed to be less than five, then we're only gonna print out one, two, three, four, and because A now gets to be five, we don't execute this bracket of code because A is equal to five, so A is not less than five. And we can check if you just add here less than or equal to five, we get the, that printout. So yeah, that's basically how a while loop works. You have a variable, I have an integer a here is equal to one. And I check if a is less than or equal to five. 
If that statement is true, I execute this line of code. And usually at the end, you increase the integer by one or by more than one. You don't have to go just one. You can go plus equals two. Now we're increasing it by two every time and run it again. We have one, three and five because a increased by two every time. So the first time it's one. Next time plus two. So it's three and then five. So loops are very powerful in programming languages. And then we have the do while loop. Just gonna remove this one, then go up here, write do, add brackets, and end this with a semicolon. And the difference here against the normal while loop, do while loop will always execute this bracket of code even if this turns false. So it will always execute the code at least once. So if I have a equals one and I check for if a is less than one, meaning this is false, we will execute this line of code at least once. And if we change this to 10, if it's less than 10, we execute the code and we're stuck in a infinite, I'm trying to mark the text here, we're stuck in a infinite loop. So we forgot to add a way for a to increase and we can do it here, a plus plus, or you can have a plus plus inside the statement check. And that will work just as well, three, six, nine, ten. And that is because we increase it by one after we have used the variable. So, and the last loop is the for loop. So I'm just gonna remove everything here. We're gonna go for two parentheses and then the code bracket for executing whatever code we have here every time we do one iteration as it's called. And inside here, we're gonna have three parts for a for loop. First, we need a variable int i, and we're gonna set it to zero. Then we need a check to check how many times are we going to do this iteration? How many times are we going to loop through this? And we're going to do this loop as long as i is less than 10. So 10 times, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, we will not do it if i is equal to 10 or more than 10. And the last part we need is i plus plus. And then of course we have the code we wanna execute, which will be in here, hello plus i. And then we can see what happens. Hello, one, zero, one, two, three, two, nine. Yeah. And one cool thing about loops is that you can put loops inside other loops. And if we're talking about for loops here, then they become nested. So that's called nested for loops. And let's make one here. So let's copy this entire loop and put it inside our other loop. And because we already have a variable here, int i, we can call this one int a and do the same here, a less than 10, a plus plus. But instead of printing out hello, let us print out world and then plus a. And if we run it now, we should have 10 of these for every one of these. Let's go to the top. So here we have hello, zero, world one two three four five six and nine so we enter this one first prints out this then we come down here and we do this loop till this is no longer true and then we go back up here print this one out and now we're doing another one of these but it's restarted we initialize a again to zero and we just do this over and over so you can put loops in a loop in a loop if you want to. But usually you don't add more than two or three and that you can think of as dimension. So this first one could be in the x direction if you're trying to print something. 
this one will be in the y direction and if you had another one which would be in the z direction you could now draw items in a 3d world if you want to but yeah it's possible to put a loop inside another loop before the end of this episode i want to say that there is another version of a for loop called enhanced for loop and we're not going to get into that one today because that one is usually used when you have some sort of array a list of numbers or objects or whatever so because we haven't gotten to arrays yet i will not cover enhanced for loop in this episode that will come later so yeah i just wanted to mention that and i hope that you learned something today and if you did hit that like button and subscribe take care now and i hope to see you in the next episode as well cheers <laughs>